2 Corinthians chapter 12, where Paul talks about a hardship that he had to endure. Verse 7, And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Now this is not like a physical, actual thorn in Paul's flesh. He's not come up against a plant and gotten stuck by something. He's using this to describe what's bothering him in his life. And again, we are not told what that is. I so wish that we were, but I think we're not told because it's not important. Uh, what's important is how Paul answered these struggles and how he showed God meeting him in these trials. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. Now three is a number in the Bible indicating completeness. So we kind of get this idea that Paul is giving everything he is, putting himself fully before God. He's completely vulnerable in his struggles and saying, please, please take this away. I can't do this. I don't want this. Make this pass for me. It reminds me of Jesus Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane on the night of his crucifixion when he says to God, if it be your will, let this cup of sufferings pass from me. But he says, nevertheless, your will be done. And what is God's will for Paul in verse 9? And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. He says to Paul effectively, no. I'm not going to take these sufferings away. I'm not going to take these sufferings away because I want you to draw in closer to me. I want you to be brought in complete dependence upon my strength and upon my love. And Paul says, Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And in saying that, Paul is not saying, well, when I'm weak, then God makes me strong. No, he's saying when I am weak, God brings me to himself. I can experience the power of Christ, the strength of him over my life. And Paul is in search of and in love with this close relationship with the Lord. And he is basically saying, bring these problems on me every day if they make me fully lay down in front of my Savior, if they make me trust in him above myself and above this world. And notice this, that Paul has a very effective ministry. And it's not effective in spite of his problems in spite of his thorn in the flesh. It's effective in the midst of it. Again, God can use us with whatever struggles that we have. And it was this passage right here that helped me understand that I truly felt was God's answer to me on why I have OCD and anxiety and depression, why I struggle with these things, not because God hates me, not because he's forgotten me, but because he wants me to share messages like this with the world. Because he wants me to understand that he is good, that he operates in grace among men, and that he offers peace and rest in himself. That he offers sufficiency in this life. Even if we are not materially prosperous, we can have the complete provision of God's love and presence, and there is no better thing than that. We deserve nothing, and yet God offers us everything. Whatever your struggle, whatever your ailment, God, again, can and will use it for your good and his glory if you simply surrender it to him. And that's the beauty of this message. It's not one of consigning yourself to sadness. It's not one of consigning yourself to disease or to weakness. It's one of saying, I'm going to be strong in God's love. I'm going to be strong in what he has for me in my life. And if he chooses to deliver me from my shortcomings, from my hardships, then hey, that's good. I'll praise him in that. But if he decides not to deliver me from those, that's okay too. 
because he can use me right where I am and I'm no longer going to hide behind those things that separate me from others. I'm going to glory in them because God has chosen to use me as a vessel set apart for his glory. And that's the message. Complete dependence upon God, thankfulness for where he has called you, and an acknowledgement that your shortcomings, your trials, are not necessarily a result of sin, but a result of God's goodness in your life, of his calling to you to greater trust in him and to share his goodness with the world.